Death is an illusion. You cannot die. This physical body is not who you are. Your physical body is just an instrument for your consciousness. And your consciousness is the field of energy that sits around the physical body. And that is who you are. That holds your consciousness, holds all the information about the person you are, about all the experiences. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Louisa, your host, and our special guest today is Else Biscoff. What happens when we die? Else Biscoff offers deep insights into the mysteries of life and death based on her in-depth research on the works of Danish spiritual philosopher Martinus. Else is the author of eight books. The latest book is called Life After Death in a Nutshell, What Happens When We Die. This is her story and this is her passion. Else, welcome to Passion Harvest and I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I've already said in the introduction that you spent such a big part of your lifetime researching the works of Martinus, the Danish philosopher. Would you mind just explaining to the audience in the concepts of time, the, the central concepts of his life's work? Of course. <clears throat> you see, when, when I was 45, I encountered his work. And up till then, I had been an atheist for my whole life. I didn't believe in anything. I had no idea about um, the spiritual world or life after death, didn't really interest me. Um, but still I was a searching soul and I had a lot of questions about the meaning of life. What, what was I actually doing here? And then one day a book about Martinus fell into my hands. And, and as soon as I saw it, I intuitively knew that this is where my search ends. So I started reading his work and I was over the moon about it over the moon it answered all my questions and then a thousand more and it all made sense to me it was so logical it was so intelligent it's nothing to do with faith or religion it was just an explanation in logical intellectual terms explaining what there was the world that was about and i was just thinking whoa when i had read it i i knew i had to write about it and um so a year after I had encountered it, I wrote my first book um, about him called Death is an Illusion. It was um, published in 2002 by Paragon House Publishers in the USA. And um, if I should just very quickly say what it's about or what Martinus is about, it is that he, when he was 30, he sat down to meditate on the, on the concept of God. And he had on two consecutive days, he had two revelations, I suppose you could call it, that where he, he, he felt he left his physical body and entered another dimension. And uh, after those two experiences, he, he realized that he, he had achieved new faculties. He could suddenly see into the spiritual world that lies beyond, before and behind the physical world. And he could get answers to all questions. Like he had the energy of intuition under the control of his will. Whenever there was a question and he asked it in his head, he got the answer. And um, that resulted in his work that like from that day on, <laughs> he started writing what it was he could see. And it ended up in being a complete holistic world picture comprising both the physical and the spiritual worlds. And um, he lived uh, uh, till he was 90, he died in 1981. And he left a legacy of 10,000 pages <laughs> of, of wow. spiritual wisdom, so huge. I haven't even read it all yet, even though I am doing my best, but there are so many articles. Some of them haven't been published yet. Um, I mean, he was extremely diligent and um, his main work is called the, the Book of Life. It's in seven volumes. And I have read it three times. And you can read it. You, actually, you can just go on reading it and you will discover new aspects. I mean, it is 
like peeling an onion. It is amazing. It reveals so many aspects. It reveals everything, the, 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 the meaning of life, the solution to the mystery of life. So, I mean, how can one not be completely enthusiastic about it? Pity it isn't better known, but then it was written in Danish. It's being translated <clears throat> into 20 plus languages, but it's a huge work. It's a job that I myself am, am translating part of it into Spanish. And um, I tell you, it takes time. And that can be the reason or it's being held back by providence because people are not ready for it yet. That could also be, hopefully, um, <laughs> it will soon be released because, I mean, do we need to hear it? My God, do we need to hear that? The whole population of this planet need to realize this, that death is an illusion. You cannot die and you continue you are not, you, this physical body is not who you are. Your physical body is just an instrument for your consciousness and your consciousness is the field of energy that sits around the physical body. And that is who you are. That holds your consciousness, holds all the information about the person you are, about all the experiences, the lessons that you have learned over thousands of former lives. And, um, this, when, when the physical body becomes useless due to injury, accident, illness, or old age, you pull out, you pull your consciousness out. And when, when the consciousness, you have everything, everything, all the information about who you are, what you have experienced, your memories, your, your attitudes, your personality, your character traits, and that field of energy, <clears throat> moves on to the spiritual plane, we must understand that our field of energy operates, has a specific vibration. Everything has vibration. The color of your clothes has vibration. Everything has vibration. So um, your, your energy field or consciousness operates on a specific wavelength defined by its vibration. So, but the vibration, the wavelength is defined by the vibration and the vibration is defined by the type of thoughts you think. Let's say that you have, you are a very wonderful and loving person who will do everything you can to help other people. You are kind, you are always compassionate and empathic. Then your energy field will vibrate on a, on a wavelength that is very, very different from the person who is always angry and hateful and full of judgment and um, likes to go around shooting people or whatever. Like, so here we have the terrorist, the angry, hateful person with his or her specific vibration. And we have the very kind and loving person. Those two people, they are attracted by the law of attraction to different wavelengths in the spiritual world. That makes sense because the law of attraction is the strongest natural rule uh, law at work in the universe. So this, the law of attraction simply decrees like attracts like. So if you are a very kind person, you will attract, be attracted to a wavelength in the spiritual world where other kind persons are. And if you're a hateful person, the same will happen. So getting to grips with this is quite important because it means that you can, to a large extent, decide where you go when you pass over. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself because... You're answering all my questions. <laughs> yes, okay, already in 10 minutes. <laughs> no, but um, <clears throat> you see, what happens when we die is that our spirit pulls out. It takes the whole package out. This is what we has traditionally be called the soul. Uh, the spirit pulls out and it moves on to the intermediate phase. The intermediate phase is like 
a place in the spiritual world that is still to some extent connected to the physical plane. Like you haven't really made the, the, the proper passage yet. You're still connected to the physical plane by your thoughts, your, the thoughts that are very materialistic. Like, of course, you live in a materialistic world and when you pass over, you're still a, a, material, a materialist. You still have thoughts of a materialistic kind. And it's, of course, a huge surprise, especially if you're not aware that you will enter a spiritual world and you don't die. You, you're not at all dead. You are anything but dead when you die. You pull out and uh, you're full of beans, but you're wondering uh, what's going on? What am I doing here? Why is, what is this place? And that's because you have landed in the, in the intermediate phase where you have to where you're being prepared for the passage to the real spiritual world. And in this intermediate phase, you still have some connection, as I said, to the physical world. You can still feel if you choose to have your body uh, cremated, which I would very much not recommend. You could, may feel the, the, the burning. You may feel that you are being burned. It is not nice because you are still to some extent, as I said, connected to the physical world. And also if your loved ones are grieving your passage, that can tie you to the physical world. It is not a help. It's not helping you at all in the intermediate phase if, you, if your loved ones are grieving very much. I mean, it's of course fine to to like miss the physical presence of that person on, on the physical plane, but the, 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 they are not dead. They've just moved on. They've just gone on to another dimension. So what, what really we should do when our loved ones pass is be happy for their life, um, say thank you for what they have meant to us and um, wish them Godspeed on their journey and just realize that their life isn't over. It's just the physical presence that has now been turned off for a period of time. So um, <clears throat> in the intermediate phase, you are also sort of purged for your less finished um, mentality traits. Like, like if you say we, you are very egoistic and very greedy and, um, and you, you are intolerant and <laughs> jealous and whatnot, then these, these, t t these personality traits will be deactivated in the intermediate phase. So that once you have passed through that, you can pass on to the real spiritual world. And... Um, so for that reason, when you, when you, once you have passed through the intermediate phase and you enter the real spiritual world, you have, um, there are, there's no more thought matter. There's no more thought matter that is of any negativity. I mean, there's no, no negative thoughts. There's no, uh, as I said, hatred, no, uh, no jealousy, no greediness, no nothing. There's only love and love and more love. And for that reason, once we pass on to the real spiritual world, it is an extremely pleasant experience. But first we have to pass through the, the intermediate phase, which is also called <laughs> purgatory, which has a terrible, terrible ring to it. But it just simply means that you are being purged of your less finished sites that will then be parked on the mid, on, in the mid intermediate phase until you come back. Can I ask you a couple of questions just about Please. what you've just spoken about? <laughs> so <laughs> this might come as a shock, or maybe to me as well, but you speak about cremation and, and in many societies religions and cultures it's it's the way of yeah. doing things yeah is does martinez talk about that the the Ooh, he's written a whole book about it 
Okay. The whole book, which I have actually translated into Spanish, so I know it f from one end to the other. He's very adamant that Martino says that when when we pull out when we pull our consciousness out of the physical body, there are still trillions of living beings alive in our body in the shape of our cells, cells, molecules, atoms, organs, all these tiny beings are living beings. They are alive and they are alive even though we have pulled out because their existence is not, does not depend on our spiritual uh, being um, or our spiritual body being present in the body. They are still, they are alive as long as there's still liquid present in the body. So if we leave the body to, to its own uh, devices, mm -hmm. it will, those cells can live out their natural uh, life, life uh, span, which is around uh, three months. Like uh, the, the average lifetime of a cell is three months. So when you take the body and burn it, you give these cells and the organs that are also living beings, your liver, your, your kidneys, your lungs, your heart, you expose them to a horrible death, a horrible death by flames. And Martina says that this is a very, very unkind way to treat those small living beings that have been faithful to you for, <laughs> for, for years. So. He's very, very much against it. He says it is, it's cruel. It's a very cruel way to treat your, your microcosmos. We're talking about our microcosmos here and it consists of trillions of living beings. So if you want to be kind to all those living beings, you should simply let your body bury in the ground because then it, they have time to live out their, their natural life and they will then reincarnate in an, another body they will move on and have their their reincarnation cycle in another physical body so and i know it's this is something that is really shocking for a lot of people because so many people today are being cremated because it is considered the most hygienic and the easiest way to dispose of a dead body but it is anything but kind to our microcosmos so that is why Martinus is uh, he's very much against it. And he says that it will, it, 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 it will, it will not continue. I mean, once that, that we realize how this works, we will stop using cremation to the extent that we do today. So very interesting concept. I need to think a little bit more about that one. I'm interested in what you also said about grief and suffering of the loved ones left behind and how it can tie the consciousness yes. to the earthly plane. Do you mind just discussing that a little bit more, please? No, oh, of course not. You see, when, if you, when you are grieving very much, you are sort of pulling the energy of the, the being that has, has just passed, you're pulling it down you're pulling it down to the, to the physical plane. And this can actually, in the worst case, prevent the passage of that soul. Let's call it a soul because that's the easier way to, 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 to use, or easier word to use. It can pull the, the soul down so that it can prevent its further passage to the spiritual world. And, which, and that is very much against the interests, as you can imagine, of the p person who has just passed and is eager to move on. So, I mean, um, I understand that, that people can be very, very sad that a loved one has, has died, but it's just not doing that person any favor, being very full of grief. I mean, thank, Thank that person, thank the universe for the existence of that person in your life. Be grateful and happy that for all the good things you, ha you, ha you had together, all the wonderful moments you experienced, all the bad, the, th the good, the, the ugly, but be grateful for it and, and allow that person 
to move on. Say thank you. Thank you for, for what you did, what, what the, the role you played in my life. And um, that is the best thing we can do. It really is the best thing that we can do. And this has been, <laughs> this has been confirmed in a lot of, uh, have you heard about these um, live, no, uh, what's, the, what's it called? After death communication. After death communication, where people who have lost a loved one get some kind of, of, of um, um, communication from the loved one from the other side. It can be something they hear, it can be a visual, it can be a telephone that rings, it can be electricity that turns on and turn off. And But all those messages, and the books have been written about this, very interesting books. There's one called Hello from Heaven, which I think everybody should read just for the fun of it. And the first message they always hear is stop grieving, stop grieving. I'm fine. I have it. Have a wonderful time here. There's nothing to be sad about. And um, so, so this is, has been confirmed. So in so many, um, like, you know, uh, investigations that this is, it's not helping anybody. And also I read uh, that an, in another report from somebody who, who was on the other side and he said oh and thank you so much for your prayers for me because say, let's say that you have just loved lost a loved one if when you pray for that person and say please let that person have um, a, a pain-free and easy passage to the next plane that will help that will help that person oh it 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 boosts them uh, the, 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 the whole process. So that is much, much better to do yeah. that. Yeah, the power of prayer is a wonderful thing. Um, I, 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 um, I, I guess grief and sorrow is also part of our cultures because in other cultures they, they celebrate when um, a loved yeah. one transitions or their physical body exactly. dies. Exactly. Which we, I, yeah. I believe a big part of it is that we're taught to wallow and suffer and grieve. Not, but not only that, you're absolutely right, but also because a lot of people in the Western world are convinced that science has proved that there's no life after death. They are convinced that we are identical to our physical body because they don't know that there's also <laughs> something called spiritual matter, matter that you cannot see, you cannot hold it in your hand. But we know it is there because we use it every day when we talk on our, on our mobile phones, when we roam on, on the internet, when we use GPS, when we watch television, when we listen to radio, we are using invisible matter, invisible energy matter. And it's the same, that energy that we are using when we speak on our mobile phones that is electromagnetic radiation. And our um, aura, our spiritual body, our soul, also consists of electromagnetic radiation. So claiming that only physical matter exists is like totally out there. Everybody uses invisible matter every day. So why claim that only physical matter exists? Anyway, the reason why there is so much grief around, uh, around a dead person is that people firmly believe that that person is dead, never to be heard of again. It has, that, that person has, di has dissolved, but that's, <laughs> it's absolutely not, not real. It's not, the, it's not a fact. So I think that once we understand that we cannot really die. We cannot die. We can lose our physical body, but we are still alive. We are alive and kicking on the spiritual plane and we come back again. Then I think that this whole grief will gradually also like can dissolve or like become less important. What would you say to someone who, and, and you've kind of just explained it, but are in the depths of grief and have lost a loved one, what would 
be a tool or your advice that you could offer them to move through that grief into joy and celebration for the loved one's life? Again, expand your knowledge about what death is. I mean, that is, that's the best way because I can, I can go and say to that person, well, don't, don't be sad because he's not, he is not dead. He's gone to the other side, but that often will, won't really work. So what the, I think the best advice is to look into it. I mean, there are thousands of books about it. Read them. Read, the, read some of the near-death experiences. Watch Passion and Harvest. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, look into it. Don't just sit there in your old uh, beliefs that, that have maybe been with you for several incarnations. Move on and uh, expand your knowledge. Because once you have expanded your knowledge, you will see that the evidence is huge. There's so much evidence. But you have to look at in the direction where this evidence is. Otherwise, you will just go on believing. And I mean, I'm getting fed, pretty fed up with this because when I say to people, hmm, or when people ask me, you know, they, they know that I'm a child, so what are you doing? Oh, I'm writing and talking about life after death. And they just say, oh my God, has she lost her mind? Is what it, and they don't even want to talk about it, you know? And, and I think it's so frustrating. I know. I've been studying this for 26 years. I know that death is an illusion. It is not what it seems. It is simply a fact that we cannot die. Who we are, our essence, our consciousness is a field of energy. Energy cannot be created. It cannot be dissolved. Our soul is eternal. But people, they choose to believe in the finality of death. Mm. Um, I just want to touch back on what, what you also spoke about purgatory or the actions that were done in this hum in your human life form, whether negative or positive, and and you you have that experience before you transition to the higher realms. Is it based on your belief from the studying the works of Martinus? Do we when we return to the physical plane, when we reincarnate, do we pick up that energy that we left behind in that yes. purgatory state? Yeah, <laughs> we pick oh, it no. up. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but that is the, the, the reason why our spiritual experience after we have been through the intermediate phase is so fantastic. It is an absolute 100% experience of paradise, is that all those uh, negative thoughts that we may have had have been deactivated. So there's nothing but love and harmony and wonderful coexistence and there's only really, really a very, very fantastic life experience to have on the other side. And the reason why we have this experience is that we have to pull and, and enforce our spiritual body for our next incarnation. We have to energize it like, you know, you, you, you recharge your batteries. That's what we're doing on the spiritual plane. We recharge our batteries until we are ready again to, to reincarnate. So this is a very important thing. And also whatever karma we have shown in our previous lives does not affect our, our, our life on the spiritual plane. Our, our karma will only come into effect once we are back in the spiritual body. Like if in you have killed body. In the physical, physical body. Yeah. It's only in the physical body that, that we can um, get our karma back. Like if we have killed somebody in a previous life in cold blood, then that karma will come back to us. But obviously it can only come back when you have a physical body. It cannot come back when you're in the spirit. So, I mean, dying is a wonderful experience. It is fantastic. Just read the, the many um, near-death experiences, uh, the, the their reports. Mm. It's fantastic. It's so super interesting to read. 
So, I mean, it, there's so much, there are hundreds, hundreds of titles out there written by near-death experience. They all say the same. It's wonderful, fantastic. So if you're fr afraid of dying, then start there. Read. Educate. Life after educate. Death. educate. And, and, educate. And, and, educate yourself. Um, yes. From, from your all your research, uh, is it your belief that we're in, in, in the highest spiritual realms? Are we reunited with soul groups, soul family, or loved ones? Yes, we are. I'm, I'm not, I know there's a lot of talk about soul groups, but uh, Martinus never mentioned soul groups, mm -hmm. but he does mention that, that uh, our family and, and friends will be waiting when we, when we transition. They will be waiting for us to, well, to welcome us back. And uh, it's a very, very wonderful re reunion. So yes, and um, the spiritual world works very differently from the physical world because it is a light world of thought. So when we think of something in the spiritual world, like say, I'm think, I think about my father who, who, who died when I was 15. I will meet him immediately. Immediately he will materialize before me because thought matter moves at, at light speed. So it goes so quickly. So you can meet up with anybody. If, if you have, like, if you want to see an old friend you haven't seen since, since high school, you just think of that person and, and he will material, or she will materialize before you and you can have a conversation and um, yeah, s talk about whatever you want to talk about. So, so yes, you can meet up with, um, with every, everyone you would like to meet, to meet up with. Mm -hmm. And um, um, also if, when you're on the spiritual plane, you can, you can educate yourself. You can go to school and, and learn more about the workings of the spiritual world and the universe and, as such. There's a lot to do. It's very interesting, <laughs> very, very interesting well, uh, period. What's Martinez's views on choosing our point of exit, our point of death? Do we always, maybe not consciously, but in our human form, we always choose our time point of death and the way we die? No, actually, it's a good question because he's very specific about this. He mm -hmm. says our time of death has already been decided when we reincarnate. So there's not much we can do about it. And he also says that we always, always die at the most loving time. So, I mean, before we reincarnate into a new physical body, we have a meeting with the elders or the board of directors, call, call it what you want. Mm -hmm. We have, all of us have guardian angels. We have two or three guardian angels. They are with us always. They're in here, they're, they're next to us. We can't see them, but they're here. And they are part of this uh, group that we have our meetings with, plus some even more evolved um, beings. And during this meeting, we, we discuss what the plan for our next incarnation is. What do we need to learn? What do we need to do? Have we got any specific mission or whatever it could be? And then they send us off with all their blessings. So, so our time of death has been decided. And again, you're saying that we 100% choose to come return to reincarnate into the physical plane. Yes, it's, it's actually not something that we can decide because we are on a journey. We're on an evolutionary journey. And Martinus has made some fantastic symbols where he illustrate this journey. And um, I mean, we live, we, we are, as we move through eternity, I mean, we are eternal beings. That is such a, a, a complicated concept to get our heads around. But how do we spend eternity? Hmm. We move in cycles that then move up in spirals. So round and round and up and up and up and up and up go. And in one, in one cycle, in one cyclic moment, uh, movement, we, we, we spend most of our time on the spiritual plane. We're spiritual beings for most of the time. But at a certain point, we need to go back into the physical body because we need to con uh, experience contrast to the physical, to the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So we move into the physical world. We start as um, 
mineral matter, then we move on to being plants, animals, primitive humans, advanced cultural humans. And then at the end, we become real humans, which we haven't really reached yet, but we're getting there. So, I mean, and this is, we, this is part of the bigger plan. There's nothing we can do. We cannot change this. This is, a, uh, this is our route. We have to go through this route in the, in the physical world in order to experience contrast to the spiritual world, because without contrast, the universe cannot exist eternally. So we, we cannot, I mean, when, when we're on the spiritual plane, let's say, and we can see that there are other beings above us, and we say, ah, oh, I would like to go up there. And then our sp spiritual guides will say, well, if you want to go up there, first you have to go down again into a new physical body to learn. Oh, it's a bird. To learn oh. <laughs> um, what you need to learn. I mean, because it's our uh, one passage is unfolding and enfolding. So we unfold in the spiritual world and become one with the highest consciousness or God. And then once we have, have peaked in this experience, we enfold into darkness and ignorance. And like we become pr primitive beings, we become animals, we become primitive humans. And then we enfold again. Then we unfold, start unfolding again, because it has to go like this to in, to, to, for, in order for there to be contrast. If there were no contrast in the universe, what would there be to experience for us once we had experienced the spiritual world for full? It would be a total whiteout. There's nothing more to see, nothing more to, to experience. So back into the darkness we go. Darkness, light, darkness, light. So as you can see, this the, our route through eternity has been defined by uh, the higher being, by, by a, a superior a superior intelligence, no doubt about it. We have this blueprint with us. So until we have evolved to the point where we become real finished human beings that can only express universal love, we will have to go through more physical incarnations. But it may not be that many. I mean, once we have reached the point where we are today, it may be only five, ten more physical incarnations before we stop incarnating in this cycle. And then we, we move on and become permanent inhabitants of the spiritual world. But I have to put permanent in inverted commas because nobody lives there permanently because we, we all have to go through the cycle, light and darkness, light and darkness, light and darkness. So, hmm. gosh, it's a yes. <laughs> continuous <laughs> roller coaster. Um, yeah, <laughs> Ophi, I, I do believe we're all evolving at different levels. You can tell that based yes. on our thoughts, words, and actions. Uh, you, you spoke about karma, and for someone who has done some particularly wrong deeds, can we make amends in our lifetime? Oh, yes, we certainly can. Can we reverse the um, karma is probably the... Yes, we can. We can re reverse the karma. And um, like when, if you, let's say you are a, a, a killer, you like to go out and shoot other people, you hate them. Yeah, and you think that they are the reason for all your bad luck. Mm -hmm. So you want to go and shoot them. Then, of course, that creates a lot of dark karma. And that dark karma will have to be experienced by you, only by you. You'll, you have sent it out and you will get it back. But it may take time <clears throat> for this karmic arc. Like a, a, when you make an action, you send out a, a, a wave of energy into the universe. And this wave of energy has to perform a circular movement. So it means it comes back to you sooner or later. But it can take up to four incarnations for like a killing karma can take many incarnations before it comes back to you. It has to travel through universe and, and then it, it um, yeah, it, it can take time. So if in the meantime, 
let's say you have four incarnations before your killing karma come back. In the meantime, you realize, oh, what I did was wrong. Why did I do that? That was totally unnecessary. Why did I hate other people? Why, why, why? And you realize that it's, it was wrong. You, you, you regret what you did. Like, and then you start changing your way. You start to be kind, you start to be helpful, compassionate. You want to like, be there for other people. But let's say, after these four years, your four, sorry, four incarnations, you have changed completely. <clears throat> you have become <clears throat> a totally all loving being who couldn't hurt a fly. You have gone vegetarian or vegan, well, vegan. You don't participate in any kind of, 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 uh, of killing or you don't hate anybody. You only, ex you only emanate universal love. Then here comes the, the, the arc, the karmic arc. And it, 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 it hits your, your aura. But because of the difference there now is between the vibration in your aura due to all your, your loving attitude and the vibration of the karmic uh, arc, which is full of, of hatred, the two, they are, the, the karmic arc is simply repelled at your aura. It never affects, it never gets to affect you. So in that way, once you change your way, once you realize remorse that you are sad about what you did, that is a huge game changer for your karma. Mm. It's all about energy it, and vibration. I agree. And this is perfect because yeah. I know you've written a book on this as well, but this takes me on to the, the law of attraction or the art of attraction. Um, yeah. Do you mind? I mean, it, it, they're kind of almost the same. Do you mind discussing that as well in, in regards to what we would like to choose for our life or how we would like to direct our life or what we would like to draw into our life? Um, Martina says that he spoke about the law of attraction before anybody else. He wrote about it the first time in 1932. And... Um, he said, simply says that the law of attraction rules the universe. <laughs> so, um, the, and it, in all its simplicity, the law of attraction decrees that like energies attract each other and different energies repel each other. So, if you want to attract something from the universe, let's say you want to attract a lover. Then you must focus with all your positive thought matter, all the positive things you can muster and visualize this lover, what, what, his, what his hair looks like, how tall is he, how, how, how thick is he, whatever, all the things you want about this, visualize it with visualize it with joy and anticipation and you will attract it but and this is what most people uh, that mistake that most people think they make is that they focus on the lack they say now okay i've been i've been thinking about this and i've been visualizing him for so long where is he why hasn't he come and that <laughs> that simply just ruins the whole process. I mean, you cannot focus on the lack of something and at the same time attract it. So your only, this is, this is actually a quote from, from Abraham Hicks. <laughs> the only thing that stands between you and the realization of your dreams is your, is your focused attention to the lack of it. Mm. So... So would one, when they're visualizing, believe that they already have it? It's already yes. there. They're just yes. aligning with it. Yes. Or even exactly. saying thank you for bringing it yes, into my life. Yes, absolutely. Say thank you. See, see yourself walking up the aisle with this dream guy or whatever you have in mind, uh, whatever your wish is. Um, but of course, there's also a karmic element in whether you will succeed in this or not. 
because if you are a if you are a person that are very angry with with people and you go out into the street and you shout at people and and you you kick a beggar and what whatever if you are if you are not a kind person then then you cannot attract very very desirable things i mean the universe doesn't work like that if in on one hand you you go and go around being very unkind and on the other hand you in, insist on getting this i want this for me then th that makes it more complicated so you have to be kind person kind person helpful compassionate um, now that helps the, that really helps the, the process but i mean the, the whole universe is ruled by the, the law of attraction like look at the distance of, from of this planet to the sun do you think that's a coincidence no it's the law of attraction that put has put it right here where it needs to be and round and round i mean when you start looking at thinking about how the universe has been organized it's absolutely amazing we are, do you realize that we are sitting here on a planet that turns around itself, but moves at a speed of, I think it's, is it every second, thousands of miles. It's amazing. And that is also ruled by the law of attraction. The, the position of everything, the position of the galaxies, the position of the planets, all ruled by the law of attraction. It's, it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Elsa, I've loved, to, I've loved talking to you today and I've asked you a lot of questions. Is there something on a final note you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience? The, the most important thing, I think, is that realising that you cannot die and realising that there's something called the law of karma and that you will reap what you have sown until we realize that what we do to others, we eventually do to ourselves. It's stupid to go out and cheat other people because we do it to ourselves. In our next life, we will get it back. So, I mean, it is so essential for the, <laughs> for the betterment of conditions on this planet that we realize this, that there's no running away from it. I mean, we, we have to realize that we are the only ones responsible for our fate. Nobody else. Not our husband or our father or our mother or our friends. We're not victims. No, we are absolutely not victims. And there is no chance occurrences in this fantastic universe. Everything is ruled by laws. And I said by the most fine-tuned laws so believing that we can just go around treating other people in any old way and it will never affect us, it will have no effect on our own lives, is a huge mistake, a huge mistake. And I mean, I understand, I really understand when Martina says it's the greatest challenge facing humankind. Realizing we don't die and realizing that we have we, that we reap as we sow. So go out there and only sow what you would be happy to reap. And once we get that, how do you think the world will look? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, well, else beautiful way to end the show. And a big, again, congratulations on your new book, Life After Death, in a nutshell, what happens when we die. And I'll leave a link below in the show notes for people to connect Thank with you. Thank you so much. You are most kind. <laughs> and it's been very insightful talking to you. Thank you again. Thank Bye, you. Else. You're <laughs> Bye. 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 If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.